Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Boxing Reviews and O2, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at a super handy gadget for transferring data across your M.2 drives, both SATA and NVMe based. It doesn't cost a fortune. This is the Maywo M.2 docking station. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Maywo or Maywo. I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it, but. You'll find the links in the video description, as always. This was kindly sent to us by Ugly Bob. Thank you very much, Ugly Bob. And this is essentially a M.2 kind of cloning and data access drive. So what you want to do is put this on your desk, and it's got two ports on there, one of which supports M.2 SATA drives, the other one supports M.2 NVMe drives. So you can't actually do direct cloning on this particular model, although there are four or five different models in the range, which uh, I'll put links in the video description as well, and you maybe see it on the screen now. So if you actually want to do cloning of M.2 drives, this particular model isn't the one for you. There is a downside if you go with the actual kind of hardware cloning devices, especially on M.2 at the moment, as they generally tend to be single use only. And what I mean by that is either they're going to be M.2 SATA or they're going to be M.2 NVMe because they're two very different types of technology, especially when it comes down to the cloning process. But when it comes to actually just accessing the data, transferring the data, and actually doing backups or cloning via Windows or another operating system, this is absolutely perfect because it covers both bases, M.2 SATA and M.2 NVMe, or PCIe as it's otherwise known. So anyway, let's go through the packaging, take a look at what we get inside, and I'll show you some real-world tests. I've actually done some tests already on this because recently I've had my... Uh, two terabyte drive NVMe, which has uh, gone slightly pear-shaped. So I've had to quickly get the data off of that and store it onto my NAS drive. But again, we'll go into that a little bit later. So looking at the uh, unit itself, you see it's actually pretty basic packaging, not a great deal on there. It gives you an idea of what's kind of going on there with the sticks stuck into the slots there. On the side, it gives you some options of the other models, which are actually available. And on the back, it goes into the specifications. And also there is a QR code, which you can scan to get more information. I'll put that on the screen for you large so you can read it for yourselves and take in some of that information. When we open up the package, looking inside, you see this nice little unit. So this is actually the docking station itself and it actually is very, very cute. So looking at the front section, we've got the two ports. So they're clearly marked. The left-hand side one is your M.2 SATA. The right-hand side is your M.2 NVMe. Now you can't put the drives in the wrong ports because they physically won't fit. So don't worry about that too much. There is also LEDs on there as well, so where it actually says what the drive is, that actually flashes whilst you're transferring data, so it gives you an idea of what's going on. And also, when the drive is inserted, after a few seconds of it initialising, the light will come on permanently. When it's transferring data, it flashes, you get the general idea. So two ports there. You don't have to use both at the same time. You can if you want to, just use one or use the other, and they are actually hot pluggable. So you can just leave this connected permanently, and when you want to stick your drive in, literally just pick up your drive. This one is a M.2 NVMe drive, so we'll put that into this side, and just push it into the slot, and that is effectively it. It will then register in Windows, or your operating system of choice, of which this covers quite a few, and then you can read data, or transfer data, or do whatever you want to. Of course, if you wanted to, you could actually fire up something like Macrium, and use Macrium's Reflect program, which is generally free for home use, and you can use this to then transfer all of your information, maybe from your existing C drive on your Windows machine to your new drive, take this out and then put it into your machine as part of an upgrade path. Absolutely perfect. And of course, you can do exactly the same with the M.2 drives based on the SATA. So those are the ones with the M style key. And that goes in again, similar sort of deal. Just fits in the drive. And also because it's basically open air, you don't get too much problems with them overheating, especially when you're transferring lots of data because the heat is generally going to rise up through and off them, so it's not like it's an, an enclosed situation. Obviously, if you are getting to the point where you're transferring hundreds and hundreds of data, you can always aim a fan in its direction if you wanted to. Another nice feature is on the front, we've got an SD card reader, so that does SD cards and SD Express. There's also a LED on the front as well, which again will tell you what is going on when you're transferring data. So I think for a lot of people, this is actually going to be really handy. Yeah, very handy as just a docking station in general but also, again, can get you out of a fix should a drive start failing and you need to copy off quickly and you don't have another M.2 port on your PC or whatever the device may be. On the sides, not really a great deal else to talk about. Uh, this is a plastic finish on the sides, although it is done particularly nice and does actually look like it's metal, to be honest with you. And the, the unit itself actually has got quite a bit of weight to it. It does feel pretty sturdy. The central section is plastic on the top here. The bottom is actually fully metal and is used basically as a heatsink for the chipset inside. 
On the back of the device, you've got two USB Type-C ports, one of which is for power, which they do provide some cables for, I'll show you those shortly, and the other one is for transferring of data. And this can support up to 10 gigabit per second speeds, obviously, depending on your PC and your Type-C connector you've got on your particular computer, laptop, whatever the case may be. On the other side, again, nothing there, so yeah, SD card on the front, power and data transfer on the back. On the bottom, you've got some ventilation holes and also there's four rubberized silicon feet, which mean it's gonna sit on the desk and not really wanna swap around or slip around, that kind of stuff. It does stay on the desk pretty firmly. Looking into the box, looking at some of the more of the accessories, one slight downside of the fact this comes from, uh, essentially it comes from AliExpress, so they've actually sent it with the kind of shaver type adapter, which you can get adapters for, it's not a problem. And this is gonna be your USB power. So you've got USB type A, to type C going into the unit to power it. This is rated at three amps. I've actually used a different adapter altogether, which gives out two amps and was absolutely fine doing my testing and data transfers. Obviously, because this is USB type C, we do get two cables. So you get one of which is the actual data cable. So that is a USB type C to type C connection, again, supporting up to 10 gigabits per second. And the other cable included is a USB three cable, which has a USB type A on one end and the USB Type-C on the other. So this is essentially your power cable. Now I wouldn't recommend powering the device from anything other than a separate power pack for data integrity and all that kind of stuff. And also through USB, you're unlikely to get that kind of power delivery through a standard port, but obviously your mileage may vary. Also included is a certificate to say that it's passed a QC test, which is uh, yeah, always quite nice to see. And there is a user manual which goes through in uh, multi-languages, well, English and Chinese essentially, and tells you the specs, etc., and how to install drives, etc., etc. All very interesting stuff, I'm sure. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's uh, take a look at some of the speed tests on the screen now, and you can see what we're getting. So, first of all, we started off, I just did a basic test of uh, I found about a 13 gigabyte file, which is various video files and Adobe Premiere files. First of all, we transferred it just from the PC into our NAS drive across the network at one gigabit per second, and we were getting roughly somewhere in the region of peaking about 110 megabits per second, or sorry, megabytes per second, I should say. Then I thought I'd try it with the SATA drive, so it's the M.2 SATA drive, exactly the same files from the desktop of the PC onto the drive, and we're getting results somewhere in the sort of mid 300s, which is perfectly acceptable. Then we tried it with the NVMe drive, and the speeds on that, again, we're hitting the sort of 500s, Again, you'll see it on the screen exactly. I'm trying to remember this from what I did yesterday, so it's not entirely clear. But yes, obviously you can see there is a noticeable speed difference. Now clearly, because USB Type-C, especially the latest generation, the 10 gigabit per second, theoretically you should be able to get 1.2 gigabytes per second transfer speeds. There are gonna be some overheads, obviously, of the device itself, Windows, file copy against cut and paste, that kind of thing. So yeah, don't expect the full speeds entirely. That is unrealistic. But in the perfect situation with the fastest possible drives, the fastest possible ports and the best type of data, you should be seeing results possibly in the kind of six to 800 megabytes per second range, if you're lucky. Again, if you've got a device which does significantly better, please tell us all about it in the comment section below. We'd be glad to hear about it. But I think for most people, generally, just the fact of being able to get data off a drive should the drive start failing, is one of those things where this is actually gonna pay for itself. Now we're talking of price, we haven't spoken about price yet. At the moment on AliExpress, as of today, the 11th of the 11th, there is an offer on and it's down to somewhere in the region about 30 UK pounds. That comes with free postage, etc. Obviously there is gonna be a slight delay getting it from AliExpress as there generally tends to be. You can find them elsewhere. We'll put some links in the video description again. So if you wanna pick one of these up, you certainly can do. Again, it's one of those things as someone who is uh, messing around with IT products all the time in swapping drives, swapping motherboards, all that kind of stuff. Accidents happen and there's always a point where maybe you've taken a drive out of a system and you're like, oh damn, I didn't take my benchmarks off the drive before I took it out of the system. This is perfect for that sort of thing because otherwise an M.2 drive can be a real fiddle, especially if you've got to go ahead, open up a PC case, to undo the screws, remove the blanking plate, put the drive in, fire up the PC again, all that kind of stuff. This makes life considerably easier. Literally just plug in the USB type C or you could, if you want to, use on a type A port if you want to. Obviously you won't get such good performance, but you certainly will be able to transfer data. So yeah, for things like that, failing drives, upgrades, maybe you're upgrading, and because you're maybe downgrading possibly, maybe you've got a one terabyte drive and, you're, and maybe you're putting in a 512 drive 
and a lot of cloning machines actually won't do it the other way around. They won't go from a large drive to a small drive. So that is something to definitely bear in mind in this case. Something like Macrium Reflect is gonna do a fantastic job with this over that USB port. So anyway, let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. Is this the sort of thing you'd like to see in your Christmas stocking? I think it's actually a really cool little item. And thanks again to Ugly Bob for sending it to us. We really do appreciate it. And certainly this week with my M.2 problems, yeah, it has actually been a genuine lifesaver. So thank you very much. So as always, comments in the video description below. Uh, don't bother clicking on like or dislike because they probably don't exist anymore. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll see you in the comments section. Thanks for watching.